You lads don't need to rush. The game's been delayed by 15 minutes. Oh, who wants to play Noughts and Crosses? Noughts and Crosses? I've not played that since I was eight years old or something. It mentally stimulates me, keeps me on my toes. Noughts and Crosses. Yes, Noughts and Crosses mentally stimulates you. Yes, Severin must be real good at Noughts and Crosses. Can you be good at Noughts and Crosses? I don't know. Come on, let's have a game. I won't bite. Wait, wait. You start in the middle. Isn't that where you're supposed to start? I'm so confused. Sevi mate, you start with the corners, then the game usually ends up in a drawer and you get bored. <laughs> My whole life has been a lie. <laughs> Whoa. I was totally unprepared for this. <laughs> Why is my life so full of disappointments? Chill, Sevi, you're playing in the Premier League in front of thousands of loving fans. <laughs> I wanted to be a ballerina! Way to go, mate. You've just tapped into his childhood trauma. Don't worry about it, pal. Have you heard of something called Wordle? <laughs> it's not as good since the New York Times bought it. Severin's got a point, you know. Sudoku. You'd love Sudoku. It's like noughts and crosses, but bigger and with numbers. That's rubbish. I always get stuck after 144. 144? <laughs> Severin, you idiot. That's the multiplication table, not Sudoku. And welcome to episode 56 of the Youth Squad Legends series with Leighton Orient. Yeah, we went drinking last night. Don't feel that worse for wear though. We are starting this one far too late. So I'm not really too sure how much content we've got here. However, we got some information about the end of this series, okay? We'll get simulating some of the Premier League games. See if we can continue the unbelievable start to the Premier League season. We can drop plenty of points and still be top. What we'll do with the patron guys, because we've only seen them once on the field of play. We'll get them transferred to European teams so we can battle it out with them in the Champions League next season. And after the conclusion of this series, I'm gonna have a couple of weeks off. We'll just be uploading one-off videos, recharging the batteries, see where we are in a couple of weeks time. If I'm ready to go again with another series, I will do so. I want it to be a return to a long time ago where I just load the save up, start recording, start the introduction. There would be no interference, no behind the scenes stuff. It would literally be whatever happens whilst recording is the entirety of the series. Brought in Monk, Lowry, and Orgy to cope with the tiredness. It's Leighton Orient against Leicester City. We'll go on to the visual sim. Maybe jump in if we have a problem. It looks like we got a really, really close free kick. Sosa's taking this from inside the box. Yeah, I do hope that you enjoyed the skit at the start of this episode. Really fun to make that one. Uh, we will be, of course, producing a final skit for the end of of the series. Go on, Sosa. Lovely goal. I'm excited to see what happens in the summer. Like, I've really enjoyed playing with Leighton Orient. It's taught me a lot of lessons about YouTube, and I'm ready to move on. It's a shame that some of these players will probably get underestimated over time. Godwin Orgy getting the second goal. I'll remember them for what they were. Colombo has been a fantastic player for us. Tembo's magnificent. Nantanina, one of the best centre mids that we've had. On goal to make it 3-0. Leighton Orient really dominating proceedings. And, my goodness, Amit Panda makes it four. We are breathless at the start of the second half. Yeah, you can just jump to result. Well, I might as well jump to result. It's 4-0 at the end. Thank you very much. Next match away against Crystal Palace. There was one comment I wanted to address. And I know that a lot of people know if the series had done well, I wouldn't have skipped like three years into the future and I wouldn't have skipped some of the precious player growth to get us to this moment of being potential Premier League champions. Well, that's just squeezed in Jean-Paul Sabali for 1-0 late in Orient. I totally get it that it does ruin it a little bit. It's not something that happens often. Over the course of Youth Squad Legends, which is, what, nine years plus now on YouTube, I think it's happened like twice or three times at most, just to try and wrap up a series a little bit quicker. Abrahim has got the equalizer for Crystal Palace after Tembo initially saved the first shot, just pushed into Abrahim's path. Crystal Palace doing well to get the equalizer. Oh, we had 15 minutes to grab 
a second goal and did exactly that. I mean, Pandor makes it 2-1. The visual sim has been so kind to me. And that will be about enough. Leighton Orient 2, Crystal Palace 1. Roma are willing to offer us Jesse James, who are the two villains from Pokemon, and £56 million. Pound. Jesse James is 80 overall. That's a really decent offer. Holy moly. That is putting me on the spot, isn't it? That is one of the best offers that I've seen on this game. So they're nearly giving us the entire valuation of the player and an 80 overall striker on top of that. That's a killer. I'm going to have to reject it because I like Ronnie Forrest too much. If that was earlier on in the series when we were kind of looking for that fourth striker, probably would have just snapped it up. We've calendar sim third round in the FA Cup, a 3-1 victory over Brighton and Hove Albion. Now, Premier League match at home against Manchester United. Monk starting, visual sim, a lot fresher than Manchester United. They must have had a game in midweek. Saucer's left Wambisaka for dead. Try and get a cross in. It was Nzanza there. It's going back to the Manchester United keeper. That's as close as anyone's got in the first half. Oh, it's a goal for Bobby Monk! After Nantanine has squared it, almost in the six-yard box, Leighton Orient are ahead. Incredibly dead game. I mean, I've just seen the stats. Only two shots so far in the entire match. Even in the visual sim, I am so surprised how poor the Premier League has become. And if there is another series in FIFA 22, then we've got to figure out what a ball that was from Nantanina across. We've got to figure out how to make these teams better. Maybe some of the free agents, some of the incredible free agents. Bobby Monk has got a red card for no apparent reason. For some of the really good players into the really good teams, you know, to try and keep that quality up. Also make sure that we can't get incredible free agents early on in the series. How has he not scored that? Oh, it's gone in now, Marcos Antonio. I guess there's potential there. We're down to 10 men with minutes to go. Two added minutes. Can we just keep the ball for the rest of the match, possibly. Yeah, that's that is full time, 2-1. Why did Bobby Monk get sent off like that? We've just faced these guys in the FA Cup and now it's Brighton against Leighton Orient in the Premier League. Yes, Sabali didn't take long, under 10 minutes. Jean-Paul Sabali squeezes him from post. It's already a matter of time before we lift this. Go on, Ronnie Forrest, hit it. It should have been a Ronnie Forrest long shot. Good play. Amit Panda slips it in. 2-0. Oh, what a goal by Jean-Paul Sabali. He took it about 30 yards. This is another incredibly comfortable victory. 3-0 away against Brighton. Bobby Monk returns. Don't know if he'll play any part in the FA Cup tie. It's away against Birmingham City. Nothing that we need to really worry about. That's another 3-1 victory. Three ones in the cup. I mean, this gap is now becoming staggering. 62 points after 23 played. And the nearest competitors, Everton, on 46. It is a chasm. Honestly, it's a bit silly how far everybody is away from us. Bournemouth against Leighton Orient. Go on. Go on, John Paul Sabali. He's really thriving under these simulated conditions. Nantanina has got the second goal for Leighton Orient just before the second half. I might sound a bit crazy. We might have been able to play and win the Premier League in that first season. It's not as challenging as the championship. 4-0, wow. It's just atrocious AI. 5-0, Nantanina. It's difficult to wrap your head around it because League 2, League 1, the championship, all being pretty difficult. They haven't been gimmies. We've had to go through the playoffs. Premier League, walk in the park. 5-0. 5-0. And the clean sheet leader is Tembo. Oh my goodness. I'm going to save that for prosperity. Now, at the start of the series, did you think for one second that Leighton Orient would have a solid defence? Because I didn't. Leighton Orient against Wolves in the snow. And it's another tap-in for Jean-Paul Sabali early on in this game. 1-0 to Leighton Orient against Wolves. Right at the end, the hiccup that I was expecting eventually, a Wolves equaliser, 90th minute by Paqueto, and that has dropped two points. But the thing is, 
the league needs a bit more than two points dropped. And we've got Everton next away from home. And if they lose this, we are far gone over the horizon. Has to be a home victory. Let's see what happens. They respond. That's Ferguson making it 1-0 to Everton. But an instant equaliser by Jean. Paul Sabali. Here comes Ronnie Forrest. It's a marauding run by Ronnie Forrest that gets us ahead. And it's the scoreline that the Premier League dreaded. 2-1 to the away side. I've jumped in for the last few seconds to soak it in. The dismay of all the other fans in the league. There ain't no stopping us now. Ain't no stopping us now. We're on the move. Mate, we have not got Fulham in the Europa League. I don't even think that's possible. I'm pretty sure the first round of the European ties should be nation locked. Look at the state of this. Fulham, Fulham, Fulham. Fulham, do you want Fulham? Do you like Fulham? Playing Orion against Brentford at the start of March. Great start. Sosa's got us 1-0 ahead. That's another one, yeah. Amit Panda's not going to miss those. Making Brentford look Sunday league. This could be another one. Sosa dribbling through them like they're not even there. Decimation at this point. It's not just Brentford. The entire league should be embarrassed about themselves. I guess we got some excitement there in the Europa League as Nantanina scores our fourth. Love playing against Fulham last time out. It's been the best game of the season by a country mile. The only team that didn't decide to lay down, it's 5-0. That's another very convincing final scoreline. Leighton Orient 5, Brentford 0. And to Barnsley in the FA Cup. We've got knocked out of the FA Cup by Barnsley. That does tell you everything. Barnsley are in the championship, so confirm the championship is better than the Premier League in this save. We are a massive 20 points clear of Everton. Jean-Paul Zabali has got the February Player of the Month award. Fair enough, Everton do have the game in hand, but like that's gonna change things. Jean-Paul Zabali has been so good in the simulation. He's caught Bobby Monk at the top goal scorers list. I mean, so is his flying as well. I have never ever seen the Premier League being rolled over like this. Arsenal against Leighton Orient. That's got nothing to do with the overalls of my players, by the way. We've had better teams overall-wise than this one that you're seeing. It's always been somewhat of a challenge lifting the trophy. This is a breeze, mate. This is the easiest thing that I've done all save. What referees have we paid off for it to be this easy? Robert J. Monkworth across to Jean-Paul Sabali. And it's 2-0 away against Arsenal. Here comes another free kick from inside the box. Sabali's gonna take it. Oh, he's put it in! What a lad! Jean-Paul Sabali! Oh my goodness! We've unleashed a monster! This is 4-0 against Arsenal. Could be five. Oh my god, we're scoring everything! There's gonna be booze ringing out at the Emirates and hashtag Wenger out even though he's been out for about... 15 years at this point. They'll still want him out for some reason. That's six. And you look at the stats, 16 shots. It could have been way more. It's quite the scoreline at the Emirates. Arsenal nil, Leighton Orient six. One name that springs straight out of that draw is Paris Saint-Germain. Somehow they found themselves in the Europa League. I did think that Fulham were going to be our nearest challengers for the Premier League. No, they've dropped down to 11, which is a massive disappointment. Back to playing the games. It's Fulham against Leighton Orient. Sun just peeking over the stadium. Makes for lovely lighting. Let's get it out wide. Could be an Amit Panda in the box and an early lead. Oh, no, no, no. Fulham season's turning into a disaster. In contrast, we are looking incredible inside and about. Kill. That's not a back kill. It'll do. It's Nantanino for the second goal. It's gone south so quickly. Jean Paul Sabali is right off the crossbar. Oh, Yomba's making a lovely run. Is Armel going to keep up? Absolutely not. Can a leg for three? And Fulham did settle down after the early two goals, but second half is not looking good for them. Looked offside to me. Flag's not going up though, well done. Fulham do have a goal, trying to keep that clean sheet, but then again, it's not gonna make much difference. This is not the Premier League, we're not chasing a golden glove. Yamba's having a field day, here comes the cross, Bobby Monk! Yeah, one result, 4-1. Maybe the game can't contain the raw sexual energy of Bobby Monk. I don't know, maybe I can't either. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, that's why the series is finishing, because if we carry it on, I might grow over it. Bobby Monk has appeared on the wing. It's Bolton, Nantanina! Oh, it's the best goal of the lot. It is 5-1, and Nantanina has smashed it in. This might go beyond the Premier League. The late and Orient hype train is looking a bit unstoppable. Oh, just float it up there. Guess who scored again? What on earth has happened? Oh, it's a great ball. Yes, there's another one for Fulham. They won't go out this competition laying down, but it might be an embarrassing aggregate scoreline by the end of it. Six, two at full time. Jean-Paul Zabali out for four weeks. So every team that we face in the simulations might be breathing a slight sigh of relief. The second encounter with Fulham Sandwich between the Europa League games, the Premier League clash at the Sponge Stadium. No Jean-Paul Sabali, no problem. Bobby Monk makes it 1-0. Mavididi with the equaliser for Fulham. I can't imagine that Fulham have got six of what FM would consider clear-cut chances. Oh, good save, Tembo. That's a seventh. I think we just cleared one off the line. Fulham trying their very best to get the winner. I'll say it again, Fulham are the second best team in the Premier League. Why they're 11th? I don't know. We're going to sim this match as well. It is dead and buried. It's Leighton Orient against Fulham. And the injury replacement system has just put my first team out, even though they were knackered. Oh! Nantanina! It's it! All play a wonderful ball there to Amit Pando. Makes it 7 to 1 aggregate. I think Bobby Monk's just scored from about 25 yards out, which you don't usually see. 10 goals in total now over the two legs. Nantanina with the third. It could be double digits soon. I guess credit to them, not double digits. 3-0 on the night, 9-2 on aggregate. Through to the next round of the Europa League. Paris Saint-Germain have got knocked out. Oh, no point to change in the side when it's going to get swapped out anyway. So uh, away against West Ham United in the Premier League to end the March fixtures. I think I've seen Nantanina creep up to 90 overall, so good for him. Di Carvalho has scored for West Ham. We are losing for once. Go on, Bobby. Oh, it's Bobby Monk. Look how tired we are and we're still getting goals. Rejecting the entire notion of being behind. And that is 1-1 at full time. Oh, we got Monaco in the Europa League. So the PSG killers. Okay. Good rest for the players. I think an international break. Jean-Paul Sabali has just returned from injury. Is that correct or is that not correct? Yeah, well... He does have the bandage sign, but he is playing at home against City. And that is what we come to expect. Manchester City scoring, looking good. 1-0. Ferran Torres, who's obviously gone to Barcelona in real life. Oh my goodness, the skill from Amit Panda. Jean-Paul Sabelli comes back from injury, starts scoring again. He's getting the golden boot this season because of these simulations. This is like Ballon d'Or worthy. Go on, Amit Panda, it's 2-1. Turn around already. These teams are level on paper, but I don't think they'll level on anything else. John Paul Sabali. Oh, making defenders miss. We've had three shots. If you look at the stats, like this is a bit of a smash and grab. Manchester City have had 61% of the possession. It's actually wild how lethal we are. Nantanina! Henry Yomba got a light injury. Never seen that before. And full time. Leighton Orient 4 with four shots. And only 40% of the possession. And that's not a light injury. Henry Yomba has suffered a broken toe. Yes, he was able to play on in that game, but it's a broken toe. He's out for three months. That all leads us to the quarterfinal of the Europa League. And the final action for this episode is Monaco against Leighton Orient. I do love their bonkers formation. They might get a bit exposed on the wings. We'll have to see how hard-working those wingers are for them. Big boot up from Tembo. So quality little nod on from Amit Panda. Could this be the first goal of the game? Sosa trying his best. Oh, yes. And slipping it into Godwin. Oh, geez. Some of the defenders should be shaking their heads at that. Has to be cleared. It's 1 0 late and Orient get in. We've jumped the advertisement boards. We're going crazy in France. Hit it, Amit. Oh, it's a thunder. <laughs> Picking them apart. Godwin Orgy. 
3-0. Trying to get through small window. Jean-Paul Sabali, top corner. Oh, crossing opportunity. Get on the end of that. Oh, hey, Bobby Monk. Towering above the defenders. That doesn't get old. He's about a foot or two above the nearest centre-back. Get it. Crossfield. What a ping. And again. That's the best goal of the night. Romeo Nantanina didn't stop running in the middle. He knew that Sosa was going to deliver. Cash and mine's back. About 10 or so episodes. And I do say the sense of achievement that I get at the end of a Youth Squad Legends series, even though we are winning everything, is the fact that we finally overcome the AI. I'm not getting that sense of achievement right now because this is not anywhere near what we've experienced through this series. I'm not having it. This has been Cutsy. Thank you ever so much for watching this episode of Youth Squad Legends. If you've enjoyed it, then please give the video a like. If you're not subscribed around here yet, then press the red box down below and the bell icon for mobile notifications. Please help out Youth Squad Legends wherever you can, watching the series over again or telling your friends and family. That would be great. We are almost there. Big thanks to everybody on the right-hand side supporting me on Patreon. A little bit underwhelming, but we're harnessing the enjoyment, and I think that'll put us in good stead for a potential next series uh, coming up. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye.